Hi, welcome back to the third video in this series of uh, looking at chapter four content and actually using StatCrunch to compute the embedded concepts in the chapter. So I'm gonna go back to our problem in question. And the first question uh, of the lab related to the idea of association and how we use a scatter plot to identify the three aspects of association, the form, the direction, and the strength of the association. And it uh, was a graph that allowed us to uh, visualize potential problems in the data, such as outliers or nonlinearities, uh, curvatures in the shape of the data and whatnot, or unequal spread, as we will see in some future example. Um, and in this second problem, we have data on two variables. We have a company that makes hard drives. And uh, clearly, the bigger the hard drives, the more expensive they tend to get, with the exception of the outlier, which it was a point that we were allowed to uh, remove because it was a very different hard drive from all the other ones. The problem actually gives us the correlation factor. It tells us that the correlation of the data in this problem is 0 0.996. So let me go back to what we were working on earlier in our whiteboard and notice how close the data points were to the linear form that cuts through them. And so a correlation factor of 0.996 is indicative of a very strong connection between where the data points lie and a perfectly straight line. In fact, as we described earlier, the correlation coefficient, correlation coefficient is a ratio. All coefficients are. It's a mathematical, um, it's the mathematical meaning of a coefficient. You have something in relationship to something else. As we defined it earlier, what we measure in a correlation coefficient is how two variables vary together, co-vary, and we compare that to how two variables vary on their own. And that's what a correlation coefficient measures. It measures the co-location of data values and with respect to this term of variation here. What do we mean by vary? Because in statistics, varying uh, comes with a very special connotation. It means uh, how things are different from the average. And so when we actually write a formula where we're looking at how two variables vary together, we're looking how x is different from the average value of x, while at the same time looking at how y varies from the average value of y. So this bracketed term is what we call a covariation. And when we take the sum of these covariations across all values that we have pairs of data for, we then thus develop the numerator of the correlation expression. The expression for the bottom requires two parts. It requires that we uh, begin by looking at how one of the two variables varies by itself. So we take the sum the square deviations in X, and those are called the variations in X. And what we do with that is we multiply those by the variations in the other variable Y, but separately. So these are separated. And in effect, uh, we need to do 
uh, one more thing to each one of these. Because they are squared, we have to take the square root of them, of these variations. before we multiply them. Only then do we multiply them to, with one another. So that is how mathematically this gets done. Uh, it takes about 12 steps on a spreadsheet to do this. And so what we do instead for purposes of this class is uh, we can go into data, compute an expression into StatCrunch. That expression is simply looking at the correlation and then we put the variable name of X and the variable name of Y in a uh, correlation expression and then we click on compute and it does the math so that's one uh, one way to do it in that crunch so uh, one formula the other formula for stat crunch to do this is called stat summary stats like you were doing in chapter three but then instead of doing uh, columns you do correlation and then you uh, look at a window that opens, and in that window, you select uh, the two variables. Then you click on Compute, and you get the answer. So that's yet another form of correlation computation. The, the last form, the form that you'll probably end up using more often, to measure the correlation coefficient between two quantitative variables is actually going to be as a part of the output for a regression because it is one of the seven statistics that StatCrunch computes when running a regression between uh, two quantitative variables, i.e. a simple linear regression in which uh, in which you uh, select x for your horizontal axis that does the that is the explanatory factor or the independent variable then you have to select y and that's the vertical variable or the predicted factor or the response variable and then you also have many other options that include uh, predicting uh, specific values of y from specific values of x, and so on and so forth. So let's compute the correlation coefficient uh, in all three ways between these two variables. So what I'm going to do next is move to the uh, stat crunch page that has the data and i'm going to not delete but only close this graph as you recall when you close an output it goes into the first item of the stat crunch menu and it shows that the result is simply hidden away so that you can have access to this space without any windows popping up in front of the space so the first thing i'll do is i'll go data Compute, expression. And if I did this, I would build the expression. I would go to correlation, which is core. And then I would click on capacity and I would move forward to after the comma and put price. And then I would say, okay. And then I would label this column R, or the symbol that is typically used in measuring correlation. And then I would click on compute, and there is the correlation. 
0.8756. Now, as you may recall from our operation earlier, that uh, when we did the scatter plot, we noticed that there was a problem. The problem was that the third data point was really different from all the other ones. And we have not removed it yet. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm simply gonna highlight the data point in question that is a potential outlier and take it out. And then I'm gonna go options, edit, and redo. And I'm gonna call this R version and compute. If you notice, the second correlation is way higher than the first one. That is in fact due to the fact that uh, the data point in question, the outlier, made the relationship seem less linear and thus farther from a 1.0, which would be a perfect association, perfect linear form. So the second correlation is quite different than the first. And I use the same formula that I built using the build button, where I find the name of the function using the proper syntax in StatCrunch for COR. And then the variable names have to be typed exactly as, as to how they are on the columns of the data table. And in this case, because of the appearance of a lot of different special characters, each variable had to be put in parentheticals. Okay. So one of the things that if you're gonna use this technique to calculate a correlation, my advice is that you simplify the names of these variables, like X and Y, so that when you are using data, you expression, you may simply type COR, open parenthesis, X comma Y, and that's, uh, R version three. As you can see, the typing of the formula is made a lot easier by the simplification of the variable names. Okay. So that's method number one. Method number two is to simply go stat, summary stats, correlation. Very similar to what you used in chapter three to calculate statistics like the mean, the variance, the standard deviation, the quartiles and whatnot. But instead of using columns, we're going to use correlation. And pick the two variables. And uh, that's it. So we're going to compute. And as you can see, there's the correlation. And it's identical to the correct computation. But except uh, that instead of using data compute expression, we use stat summary stats correlation. And last but not least, the third way that StatCrunch provides you with a correlation coefficient upon making sure the data is the proper data set and devoid of uh, extreme values and whatnot, uh, you would go stat regression simple linear, stat regression simple linear, pick X to be the right variable and Y to be the right variable, and then compute. And uh, now you get a lot of output because a regression tells you more than just the correlation coefficient. It tells you how well X explains Y, and it tells you how much error remains in the estimation model. It also depicts the linear form with the best slope and the best Y-intercept. And it allows you to make predictions if that's what you wish to do. And it will also do measure residuals as part of the options. So if you look carefully after I put X and Y, I clicked on compute, but I can make individual predictions. And I can also have the model save the residuals and the predicted values of each data point in question. The second page of the output consists of the regression line being placed in relation to the data points. As you can see, the spread around the line is very similar above as well as below the line. And the line really cuts through the middle of the data and very little is left unexplained, which is why the standard error is small and the 
uh, fit between the red line and the blue dots is near 100%. That fit is 99.78% of Y of the price of a hard drive is explained by this model. That's what uh, the R square represents. And uh, the unexplained portion of the price of a hard drive is about $8.41. That's how we would interpret the standard error. So this video uh, in review introduces you to the three different ways that StatCrunch can help you compute correlation. And uh, if you choose the third method, not only will you be able to uh, establish correlation, uh, you will be able to measure the y-intercept, the slope, build predictions of y, measure residuals or errors in estimating y, calculate the correlation, calculate what percent of y is explained by x, and calculate how much error on average is made in predicting y from x. All in all, it describes every one of the seven things that regression helps you clarify. So I would opt for this third strategy in pretty much any quantitative problem in your lab, quiz, or exam four. And I thank you for watching.